Hi, I'm Alan Vickerstaff, a 3D coach charged with over 14 years experience in the field, working on AAA to mobile games and even music video production. I hope you'll find this short video informative in the creation of your bait maps using Mammoset Toolbag. Baking in 3D is the art of putting the high detail information you create in the high poly of your asset into 2D texture sheets that drive the texturing process. There are various ways to bake. Old but still usable way is X-Normal. It's still a very handy tool regardless of its seemingly limited use and is still part of my production process when transferring textures from one map to another with altered UVs. Another is Substance Painter itself. It's a handy bake application and texturing software that allows you to bake and also add a cage to the model and bake by name function. It is a good tool and usually my second stop if I have a bake issue before trying the brute force of X-Normal to iron out major bugs. However, my first call is Marmoset Toolbag. My original reasoning is as well as having bait by name, and cages much like Substance, it has more functionality with custom cages per subtool, handy dialable automatic cages, and also a way to paint the size of cages. As well as all this, it also has a way to alter the skew of an object's normal. Again, more on that later. But altogether, it becomes a very handy tool in the 3D artist's arsenal. I was lucky enough to be part of the beta program for Mammoth Head 4 and therefore gained some early insights into the development. The most noticeable to me is by the use of ray tracing and more functional and, and a more fine tuning of the bake itself. The baking is a lot faster, enabling you to up the polygon count and not high polygon models to at least twice the size of what your PC could handle before. It saves a lot of time worrying over losing information when decimating the model for the bake. Right, so intro over onto the actual baking. Firstly, in prepping your model, make sure you have lovely IDs on the model for the texture and process that correspond with the material you wish in place in that area. And also, all subtools that are created to match your low, named also correctly with dash high in the, de in the high detail in ZBrush and dash low in the low in your 3D program, such as Maya. Here's a quick rundown of my subtools for my Roman so you can see that my choices and how it will bake. A rule of thumb I once heard in subtool baking is if, an object, if, if it's an object itself, make it a separate object in the subtools and retapol. However, I don't feel this is entirely accurate since you're dealing with quite low poly, you may decide to reduce the amount of objects relying on the normal more, baking it all down to the one texture. So that, well, baking down to the texture. So that by, say, a button that could be a separate object or maybe a belt baked into a suit, you may decide to bake in. It all depends really on how much detail you want highlighted in the main shadows and silhouette. In truth though, it simply takes a little experience to understand the relationship between separate object baking per subtool. Or merging subtools to put all that detail in the normal instead. I guess it really depends on the polygon count you're willing to go through. Anyway, once you have your subtool saved in the high, save as FBX, do the same later when the retopper is done, usually with the decimated version of the high as reference, with the low again saved as FBX. Then you should be good to go, as long as the names match and the high isn't too many polys for model sets to handle. I usually go between 10 to 20 million. Open Marmoset add a new bake project into the scene, it's placed on the left in the subtree. In previous versions of Marmoset I would do all settings be first before adding the high poly due to slowdown. Add the low poly. At this stage you can happily add all the settings uh, and save off a base. So for now, add in the maps, configuration and position, thickness and vertex color and remove the matte ID. And tick the new maps in the config panel at the bottom left. That's really all the main settings you need to worry about. However, in vertex color it may be wise to tick off use alpha to prevent it cutting out the IDs and leading an edge to all the colors. This configuration gives you all the maps you'll need for the baking that you can use next in your texturing program, such as Substance, but Marmoset also do texturing now as well. The only other map we ever need is the alpha map itself that I use when map making hair pri uh, primarily, and for torn fabric also. In the Roman we do have a torn skirt, so I add an alpha to giving us 8 maps in total. 
If you take the texture set and use multiple texture set list, you'll see the matte IDs that have applied to break up the model. I also have highlighted this by painting different colours to the mats in Maya, which is also shown in, the, in this import. For this example, I'll leave them all at 248, but usually a good usable texture set for AAA will be 496. You tend to work at double your final image size anyway. Then save off where you want the bakes to go. If you forget this, you'll be prompted later, usually when dealing with the cages. Hit the quick loader and load in the high poly model. This will take a lot of time. If under say 8mm, usually it's pretty fast. Anything higher on the PC will struggle and the program tends to become unresponsive for a short time. Occasionally your PC may freeze up and it is usually up to you to decide if the PC might recover or not. Or if you want, if, or if you have that high poly just a bit too high in polish, you may need to decimate a little bit more. Once the high is in, if you rotate, you should see some lag. Easiest way to resolve this is to hide the high for now and work on it for, for subtool. To show you in the top of the helmet, what I tend to do is go down the list of subtools and hide the high for that part. Increase the cage opacity so it's no longer transparent, then move it outward till you're sure it's not clipping. When altering the first cage, you can expect the computer to again have some thinking time, and it's usually about the same amount of time as it was loaded in. This will only occur with the first cage when altered. After that, hide the high of that subtool and move on to the next. Going down the list and also checking if my subtool don't correspond. And if so, you may have made a naming error. The easiest way to fix this is to drag the subtools to the correct position in the subtree in Marmoset, or you can rename outside the program in ZBrush or the 3D package such as Maya and resave. Resaving a high or low will again mean some thinking time for the PC to load into memory. Once all cages are done, we're ready for our first bake. Scroll to the top, hit bake, and go make a cup of tea. Take a while, and it's best to make sure that your PC isn't doing any other tasks while baking. There's always the possibility of a system crash if too much system memory is being used. If all went well, I tend to, to load new mammoths at the scene, check the model, and check for flaws. Adding both the normal to normal slot and the AO to the albedo slot. If there's an odd black shape in the AO, usually this means there's a back face protruding out of the high clip on the other side of the object. The fix is a bit slow going, but means usually a, using a move topolo topological tool or move tool with polygroup settings at brush and move the back faces back into the model. Then we save the high and refresh in Marmoset. Another issue is more easily resolved. As seen here, some elements may bake with the unusually slightly circular shape to it. This is due to the curvature of the polygon in comparison to the high end how the normal sits when baking. To solve this, we use the screw in marmoset and make the normal straight. Once all elements appear resolved, we bake until it appears the bake is clean. Testing again in the second marmoset scene. You can use the map to create a detection in your preferred texturing program. Occasionally you may spot small flaws later, say a slight, slight problem in between fingers, that type of thing, causing a problem with the normal, uh, AO, wall space and curve. However, to resolve small issues I tend to paint out the maps in Photoshop using a clone and the paint tool, sometimes even a blur for quick fixes, but name it something else in case I do ever want to rebake anything so I don't overwrite, and keep my decent workflow without too much disruption. Okay, thank you for watching. Please share this with anyone you feel could do with a little more knowledge in the baking process. Hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe, and please come out with any new work you have using these methods. Or any more questions, I'm here to help. Good luck with your new assets, and keep building.